Mic check one two one two. How you feeling, bro? I'm feeling good. Mic check one two one two. Yeah. How's my pocket square? Is it all right? This is rolling. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Well, let's go. Okay. I'm gonna get one of you. Each of you to clap. Wait, together or separate? Separate. Oops, Sorry. my fault. My fault. My fault. This is this is your time to shine because yeah. since we're rolling anyway, so I know. Roy, explain what happened just now because you were on. You came in here flustered on a phone call. Well, uh, what's going on? So there's all these like Black Friday deals going on, right? And so my wife uh, wanted to switch from Virgin Mobile to Bell okay. because it was, a, it was a great deal. And like we, we have like a small business line like my family does from back in the day. And one of the great things about the small business line is you get $25 off each line that you, like, that okay. you have. Yep. Um, and so with all with the Black Friday deal going on and with the the, the, the multi-line disc like the $25 discount and all this other stuff, it would be a wicked deal. So she wants to move from Virgin to Bell. And so all I was trying to do was actually give them business and like add a phone line to this, like to to our account. And it's become the most near impossible process. So I was on hold for an hour and 30, then I got to a lady and she's like, oh, I can't help you. I can only help you if you with your existing lines. I can't help you add a new line. Just spin you in a circle, basically. So then she transferred me to somebody <laughs> else. And they're like, we only do residential, not small business. And I was with somebody else. And this lady, I don't know what she was doing. So you but spent most of your day tied up on a phone. Yeah. Trying to figure out your phone yeah. plan. But it's a good I went, I went through two meetings today with my phone on and with the little like music playing in the little music <laughs> playing in the background while I went through two like client meetings. It was insane. <laughs> Let's wow. let's uh, what what's what's the life update right now? There's been some things happening, you know, in your life. You know, what's what's going on, man? Yeah, because uh, <laughs> I know. Great but... question, now. <laughs> great question. Um, I uh, I had a baby girl three and a half weeks ago, coming on four weeks. Congratulations now. Uh, again, my brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's been like one of the most incredible, miraculous experiences of my life. You know. Going into the day, I was, you know, Praveen and I, Praveen's my wife, Praveen and I uh, would talk like, are we ready? Like, are we ever going to be ready? Uh, like, we've like done the house, like we had all this, the nursery ready. We had yeah. all this stuff, like probably way too many gadgets, more than like we'll ever use, like in <laughs> terms of things. Yeah? yeah. But you still don't feel ready, you know? Mm -hmm. But the moment, like, like my brother had a kid seven months ago. Um, He's adorable. I love him to bits like he's my own son. But holding him was like uncomfortable, right? Like when you hold a newborn, it's different. Like you have to take care of their neck the you, and, exactly. and the way you hold them. And it's not a natural, at least for me, it wasn't a natural like yeah, ability, you, right? You do that all the time, yeah. But everybody said like, oh, like when it's your child, you just figure it out. When you, honest to gosh, when doctor put uh, Athera in our hands for the first time, it's just like you just know what to do. And it's such a like such a surreal feeling yeah. when you think when you have a moment to think back at it. You're holding this like precious life, and it's so scary at the same time because for the next like, well, until the day I die, like she is my responsibility. Yeah, it's and all it's you. A <laughs> crazy thing, crazy uh, like thing to say out loud that I am now not responsible just for my own life, which is already like. You're already, oh, yeah, struggling. Yeah, You're already no struggling kidding. with basically Jesus, right? <laughs> then I got married, and now like there's two of us. But now, like somebody solely like is like I'm like solely like relies on me and Par Parveen to like teach the right things, grow up with the right behaviors. Hope they you have like, to mold this little person into a contributing member of society. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and like. <laughs> And the worst part is, is like, I just don't want her to be a contributing member of society. I want her to be something special, right? Like, Absolutely. I want, yeah, like, I want her to leave a mark in the world. And I want to yep. teach her to, to do everything at her best, right? You know, my, like, Praveen and I, we had a long conversation. They're like, oh, you know, like, we, you, ha you have to... You have to have these conversations. The one thing they told me not to do. Um, <laughs> you, you have to have these conversations about like parenting styles. Like, where do we want to see them? Yeah. Like that. And we kind of half joke and half not. But uh, you know, she, she's been like, oh yeah, you know, like we want them to either be a doctor or we want them to be a lawyer or we want we want her to be something great, right? And I kind of just said to her, Praveen that I really don't care what she is or what she becomes in mm -hmm. life. But I want her to know that 
whatever she chooses to become in life, she better be the best at it. That's key. You want to be an that artist, be the best artist yep. on the planet. Own it. You want to be a musician, be the best musician on the planet. You want to play the recorder for the rest of your life. You better play the best damn recorder. Yeah, be the best of the best. Yeah. That's it. Like, and and because if you're the best of the best, you'll be successful no matter what. Absolutely. I truly believe that in 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 not just for Athera, not just for you know my nephew RJ, but for anybody and everybody. I, I think if you work hard to be the best of the best, then you can actually fail. Absolutely. You know, at first when you had a daughter, I was a little bit nervous just knowing your background. But now hearing you speak, I'm more confident in how you'll raise her. Honest, that's, that's a joke, by the way. Yeah, that's, <laughs> just, <laughs> honestly, I wanted a daughter, right? Like, yeah. this was, uh, for me, it was the most exciting, special moment. when Because we didn't know whether we were having a boy or a girl until the moment she came out into this world. And then the doctors told us that she's a girl. And... Like I like, jumped for joy. Uh, it was it, it, for me to raise this little princess, to have this like to be wrapped around somebody's pinky is going to be such a right. She's already got me wrapped around her pinky. Like, I, like four days in, I went on a shopping spree for her. It was insane. I, I haven't spent Daddy, that kind Daddy's of girl, man. I haven't spent that kind of money yeah. on like I, I like to shop for myself. But now my brother taught me this. He said like you're going to go to the mall, and all of a sudden your mind is going to like shift from looking at your own clothes and looking at things for you to like to her. looking at things for her. And I love RJ, but there's only so many like clothes for a boy, but for a girl, it's endless. <laughs> yeah, it, the amount of clothes there are for like little girls, and like it's just like it's a lot. All these cute little dresses and all this is oh, I'm a sucker. No. So, so you're gonna fully own. Obviously, the last I feel like during COVID, this really took things to a new level. With hashtag Girl Dad, just became like a worldwide phenomenon in my opinion, where people were just owning it more than I'd seen in the past. Yeah, I, you even, I think you sent me that message too, like uh, the night that, uh, yeah, the well, night that I, uh, when that you I text me, you. I could tell genuinely from, I know it sounds silly, but it's just from the text. Like I could tell like, how excited you were. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I was like, oh, this, this is, this, that's a beautiful thing, man, to experience. And you know, uh, I don't want to get too graphic, but you know, when Praveen was uh, giving birth, there was some minor complications. And right. also when, uh, Athera came out, um, she had like she was sort of as she was born uh her head was like elongated and like almost like a cone head right and scared you oh yeah my i can imagine uh, my uh, biggest uh, fear <laughs> and i've been very vocal about my biggest fear yeah. was was if my baby was ugly right <laughs> like i will like i will publicly say that that if uh if my baby was ugly yeah, i wouldn't know what to do and um and so <laughs> Who would you blame? I don't know. Was it your genes? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my parents would say it's my genes. Yeah, yeah. It'd have to come back to you because Parveen's not taking that. No, no. I wouldn't want her to take that. But I, I remember I'd be like, I was jumping for joy that it was a girl. And then the next moment out of my breath was like, that's not my effing baby. <laughs> and, and I pointed at her head and all the doctors. There was it was like two neonatologists, uh, two neonatologists, some nurses, two uh, OBGYNs in the room. Like, yeah. they all looked at me and they just shook their heads in disappointment. And they're like, it's just swelling. It's like going down. Like they know what you were yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah, They all knew. <laughs> like, and they're like, just chill. <laughs> it's coming back to normal. That can be a scary thing. Yeah. And, uh, and by the next morning, like swelling went down significantly and all that. Uh, and she's the most beautiful little girl in the world. Like she has, and, like, and she is so beautiful. Obviously in, in Hindu she's culture, um, names usually mean, names are significant. You know, just picking something off the wall. What did you guys, is there a, a reason you picked this name? Is there some deeper meaning behind it? So the name, the, the name Athira means like, uh, it means prayer. Uh, it means lightning, not lightning, but light, like lightning. Like lightning yeah. yeah. Um, but it's actually a funny story how we picked the name. Uh, it had nothing to do with the meaning behind it. Okay. We had actually never heard this name before. Uh, both Praveen and I, for this name was totally foreign to us until one day. Uh, I was in Mexico with Praveen. We were on our honeymoon. Uh, it was our second and last day there, last day there. My phone fell in the ocean uh, and what? it broke. <laughs> In the ocean? Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, long story short, trying to take a selfie. As I pulled my phone out, it slips out of my hand, and we were on a bridge. And, like, on the bridge has, like, little slats. And it went right through. How? I don't know. <laughs> it, like, went vertical, <laughs> slipped through the slat, 
jump, falls into the ocean, stops at the top of the ocean just to pause and look at me for a moment and be like, ha sucker. <laughs> and then uh, falls into the, then like goes down to the ocean and in, into the bottom of the ocean. Wasn't very deep. So I thought I should jump in after it. So I was wearing like $5 like crap sunglasses. Yeah. I took them off, made Parveen hold them, and I jumped in after my phone. When I jumped in after my phone, I realized I had my wallet in my pocket. So all my cash, my license, my IDs, my credit cards. Uh, and the most important thing, like this ticket at the all-inclusive that you need to leave the resort. Um, you did more damage yeah, by 100%, jumping into the water. A hundred percent. And so we're, we next spend the next two hours in, in the hotel room with a hair dryer trying to dry off all the And you didn't get the phone. The phone we got. Oh, okay, so you found the phone. Okay. And then we went to a restaurant, asked for a boil, or like bowl a bowl of rice. Of rice. <laughs> Didn't work. So fast forward, we get back to Edmonton and we end up at the Apple store. Okay. And there was this young Indian guy who was helping us out and just trying to up like trying to sell us two phones instead of just one for me, one for Parveen too. And we were chumming it up with him and he told us that he had this girlfriend. So naturally, while we were having conversation, he's like, Oh yeah, we asked what her name was, and he said her name's Athira. Oh, interesting. And Parvi and I looked at each other, and we just kept going. And then the moment we left the store, oh, this wow. was like two months after we got married. Yeah. Nowhere near pregnant, nowhere nothing. We didn't know we were having a girl. We said to each other, we were like, "That name is so unique. If we ever have a girl, we are naming that. We are naming her." This was a long Athira. time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This wow. was a year and a year and a quarter ago. Year and year and a bit ago. Uh, okay. And we wrote it in our new phones on the note on in the, the note, notes. Just we in wrote, case, yeah. Yeah, we wrote Athira down. And we tried, like we 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 had a list of boy names and girl names, and Athira always sat at the top. And just the the reason of how it happened and the uniqueness behind it, um, a lot of people have said to me that like it almost sounds like a like a Greek warrior's that's name. That's what I was gonna right? say, like so, like Xena, the warrior yeah, princess. That's, yeah, a, that's the first thing I thought of. And so for us, I, I, we're, we're happy, and uh, and people love love the name. People think it's different, and, yeah, it's and at the end of the day, uh, you know. My dad's doctor, like he messaged me and he 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 said, Rohit, you know, the name uh, Athira, it's so powerful and she's going to do great things in this life. And I truly believe that, that we've set her up for success from day one. There you go. Beautiful. Yeah. So sticking with the, the family side, and I think you know this, I have a special surprise coming for you, whether it's in this box, whether it's somewhere else, some. There's a, there's a cool twist to this, not twist, but a cool part to this podcast. Okay, I didn't know that, but all right. Um, yeah, you didn't know that. It was a surprise. Yes, okay. But there's surprise. something I want to uncover before I bring this, you know, this surprise to life for everyone. And it's something that we've been getting to know, getting to know each other over the last X, well, a few months. A few months, It's yeah, not been very long. No. But I feel we built like a really cool relationship and the wives are getting together. It's just, it's a nice yeah, dynamic, yeah, right? Absolutely. It's always nice. Meeting. Got really close, really fast, right? And, and, and very it's fast. great, yeah. yeah. And I love it. Um, but there's a story that always stuck with me from the beginning when you, when we, one of the first times we met, and it's always carried out through every single conversation we've had, food comes up. And generally it would be like, it's like junk food, fast food, fried food. And it, I'm not judging you because these are things I love too. And you know that, but oh, take God. me back. Don't tell, you, me, don't tell me I know what the surprise is. <laughs> bad. <laughs> take this me back bad. to when, to being a young child, because you told me the story where you guys would pretty much eat fast food. Yeah. It was oh, like a religion yeah, to you. So yeah, take yeah. take me back to that time and explain that. Yeah. So growing up, um, we ate fast food on so Mondays was McChicken Mondays. It was dollar forty nine McChickens. Uh, Tuesday was Toonie Tuesday uh, at KFC. I've been eating Toonie Tuesday since it was legitimately a Toonie. Okay. Now it's I remember damn, those days. Now it's damn near three ninety nine for. <laughs> it's not for, Toonie Tuesday. Yeah. Anymore. No, not at all. And, and not a lot of people will remember this, but if you like like no kfc way back when uh at that time they used to serve uh corn fritters and onion nuggets they were too much like i didn't even know that and, wow. and they were like so additionally to our toonie tuesday like our four toonie tuesdays we'd get as a family yeah we'd always get like a thing of onion nuggets or or a thing of uh corn fritters and for us to eat as family so it was <laughs> wicked uh wednesday became 59 cent tacos at taco bell okay thursday we typically ate at home Friday was either Pizza Hut or Chinese food. We would take in. We had this plastic sheet that we would sit on the ground, all four of us as a family. Okay. Okay. Uh, we would sit on the ground. We would put on, typically we'd like watch an Indian movie. Uh, but before that, we'd always watch Fear Factor. Classic. It was like, classic this show. Is like, yeah. I, I can play this back like it was like yesterday, right? Uh, 
Saturday, I always go out to a restaurant. Uh, back in the day, there was a restaurant on 51st Ave here in Edmonton called Cheesecake Cafe. Uh, we it's used to very old school. Yeah, good one though. Uh, we used to frequent for Cheesecake Cafe. Uh, you know, we had a waiter there. His name was Tony. He was this like surfer dude. Man. Uh, and, and like we would wait, on, he would wait on us uh, all the time. And, and yeah. so th- like you have these like vivid memories. And then Sundays, Sundays, Sundays we ate at home, but Sundays were bad, right? So Sundays were a day that uh, that it was like Whopper Juniors were on special. I think they were a dollar forty nine or dollar sixty nine. I can't remember, and I, and I can't remember because I don't eat them. All right, and uh, oh, I think I remember this story. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, <laughs> um, Sundays was like homework day and study day for me, you know. And if like I like I was misbehaving or I was doing something you know not doing the homework I, like my parents would get me make me eat a whopper or a whopper junior like i've only eaten like two in my entire life but um for me i'd rather go hungry than eat a whopper junior that's not it's saying, a crazy life to live when fast food is, not is saying a punishment. i don't like burger king <laughs> but i did not i do not like you don't like the whopper you just whopper, didn't mess yeah. with it and that's yeah. fair so, yeah so, so in, in a week essentially five out of the seven days yeah, and that sort of carried through, carried through forever. Like I, I, like forever, we've eaten out. You know, on Saturdays, if we went out to restaurants, it was like Cheesecake Cafe normally. Otherwise, we would go to back in the day Eastside Mario's a lot. Yeah, um, we used to go to Moxie's to have like their sampler platter, uh, like their Appy sampler platter. That used to be good. That was, that was the, wicked. The, yeah, the, the dip and the chio, the, the, med- the, the, the yeah, bread. the med bread, man. See, we can we can bond over. And food, then man. Uh, and then before there used to be a restaurant called Joey Tomatoes. Yeah, so yep. Joey Tomatoes we used to go to a lot. So. Uh, Friday was always Pizza Hut, or there was a restaurant called Best Chinese Food. Uh, literally the best Chinese so, food I've ever had, man. So let me ask you this, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> First of all, you lived a great, you have lived a fabulous life, my friend. Yeah, yeah. I just want to tell, tell you that <laughs> it's, it's great because as as a young kid growing up, we were lucky to have whatever McDonald's on a Friday, mm-hmm. and then obviously going out for dinner on Saturday, two days a week, and we yep. felt like that was not enough. So to hear this story of yours. It makes me cry inside because I'm so happy the, for the, the life you live. We were so spoiled. Like even five <laughs> days wasn't enough. When you when you get into it, like and you're like, you're like, what do we have to today? I remember uh, when I moved when we moved to Victoria. So so we were. I was born in Edmonton. Yep. Uh, we grew up here. Uh, when when I moved to Victoria and my family moved really quickly after that, my dad had gotten a promotion with the company he was with, and he had moved to Vancouver. So okay. he spent Monday to Friday in Vancouver, and then would come back on the weekends. Uh, oh, okay. to spend with us and then Monday morning first thing he would be gone again I remember like you know I'd come home from school and my mom I'd ask mom like what's for supper and she'd be like oh I'm making dal or I'm making like bindi which is like you know it's like lentils okra. and yeah, like, yeah. okra you know and I would sneak upstairs and I would like whisper like call my dad and I'd whisper to him be like dad we're eating dal for supper I don't want to do this so, like please can you help and so he Ten minutes later, the phone would ring at home. No way. He'd say he'd call you. my mom. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, oh, what are you having for supper? Oh, I'm making dal roti. No, why are you gonna do that? Just take the kids out. And, and he would save my life like all the time. Seriously. Oh, yeah. Oh, so dad was yeah. holding it down. Yeah, dad, dad, like my dad and I have a very special relationship. Oh, and of he's, course, he's, yeah. he's 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 hooked it up ever since I was little. So I I uh so Man, I love hearing this. So rank rank for me just the top three places. You ate so many different places throughout your childhood. What are the three that are, are your go-tos? And three, gonna, I, as, as you answer that, I'm going to get up and do something. But you just answer that. My three go-tos, McDonald's, KFC, and then now because of Praveen, A&W. Um, okay, so, before yeah. that, I would have never done A&W. So I, t- I um, wanted to do something special and, for your podcast. Wow. So, <laughs> so look, Wendy's, if I put this here, will they see it? I don't know, but I'm gonna put, I'll put it here and I'll hold it up a little bit. But basically what we have here is we have like a new version, not a new version, but my version of a mukbang. Okay? Wow. So basically what, what we have is here? this is like, you know, Russian roulette or Navin roulette, brown ballers roulette. There's five, you know, different burgers. Here. And obviously they all look fabulous, by the way. And I'm going to put your skills to the test because if you don't answer this correctly, you're a fraud. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's five different burgers. You know, I obviously I have it written down here so I didn't forget. And we're going to uncover these. So what I'd like you to do first is pick whatever. We're going to kick it off right now. You kick, pick whatever one you want. So we'll get the one that I, I'm going to hate the most out of the way first. And that's the, the one with pickles because I don't like pickles. So. Okay, so you don't like pickles. So, oh, yeah, so, so you we'll, want this one? Yeah, we'll do that first. All right, so I'm going to let you grab way. it. You, know, you, know, you don't have to eat the whole thing. It's up to you. If you want it, you can. Wow. 
Um, do I have to eat the pickles? Can I move them? You can move the pickles. Look, this is a plate. This is your plate. You're, wow. you're my guest, man. Wow, wow, wow. I know which wow. one that is, but I'll still open it just to make sure I know. I already know which one this is. So we'll have, hopefully we'll have a counter or some kind of cool thing come on the screen to, you know, showcase if you're right or wrong about this. So am I guessing what the type of where this burger is? Yeah, from I guess actually what I actually, what, what is the point of the what are we doing here? The the point of this is to test your knowledge. You to me are a fast food aficionado. You and Parveen. I won't even bring Parveen into this. You eat a lot of fast food, so yeah. you should know these. So feel free to take, you know, take your first and bite. Do I just need to tell you the place or do I need to tell you the name of the burger? Like, uh, cause I well, we, we know they're all chicken burgers. Yeah. If you could just name the places from, you know, that, that's good right there. And if you want to describe it, I, I, I can tell by the crunch already. It, it, you know, it's, it's, it's looking good. I want to know. <laughs> The pickle is chasing me. The pickle's throwing you off? Mm-hmm. But the thing is... To me, this is the easiest one to pick. And I know I bought it, but just based on looks, this is the easiest one to pick. I know where this is from, but I've never... I've only ever had it. Where do you think it's from? Hold on a second. <laughs> if you had to pick... I'm going to give you three more seconds here because you've had two nice bites to see which, which is our first burger guess. This is KFC. You, th- you think it's KFC? Final answer? Mm-hmm. I'm so disappointed that you got the first one wrong. Is it wrong? Yeah, it's wrong. Is it Popeye's? Put it down. Oh, <laughs> You're not allowed to have it's... that burger anymore. I don't even know where it's from. <laughs> Hold on. Um, you know, let, me, let me be a good host here. It does. And also give you this. Oh, scam. I'm going to step in here. <laughs> you should have not got me pickles. That would have been the first problem. <laughs> This is harder than I thought it was. This is good. This, this is good. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to throw you for a loop here to no. see your knowledge. Yeah, so the first one was Popeyes. You're weird things in it too, so. Hey, I just ordered how it came, you know, so just whatever's authentic to that restaurant I got, but we'll have the rest later. I'll let you mm. recoup from this loss yeah, you yeah. just took. And, you know, wow, we'll, we'll, I lost on that one. You lost already. You're 0 for 1. You wow. Got, you got four left. Okay. Hopefully you can, you know, recover here. Um, mm. Obviously a, a big part of this podcast and everything we're doing is lends itself to you. Mm-hmm. Brown Ballers podcast, yep. you know, we'll, we'll kind of dive into the story here is you had messaged me or we, we, we were talking and this is around the same time me and G were getting ready to launch a podcast. I was like, hey, it's time. Like we need to build a, another media arm for Brown Ballers mm-hmm. and what we're doing and the podcast is perfect. And then you came into the picture. Yeah. And you were like a, a major advocate. You were the reason, you know, we were with Title League and we got this, this podcast deal and we're a part of the network. We're happy to have you on the network, by the way. Uh, we, 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 we think, uh, you know, we think this is like really great for us because it'll open a, 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 I yeah. think a huge demographic that we're not attracting right now. Right. Uh, and, I, and I'm really excited to be sort of on the title side, leading this, leading this, the, Absolutely. the, the adventure, right? So, with us. So, and we appreciate that. But on your side, what was it that in, intrigued you? And there may have been a few things, but like, why? Cause I feel like for you, you're like, and we talked about this. It seems like you're just as passionate about it, you know, as we are. And, and, and well, why is that? Because we need a platform. We, right now, the reality is, is we don't have or a known platform where somebody can go to learn about people who are successful or um, a baller in their right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, like, and it doesn't have to be somebody famous. That's, that's the thing. Right, it doesn't have to be, nope. and and people misinterpret that that you can you you're only really quote unquote successful when you're famous, when you're famous. and your 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 name is known, right? Mm-hmm. And that's not you know the accurate in any slight of the imagination. I like to believe I'm successful. I like I've worked hard in you know in career paths that I've got. Um, I've got a lovely wife. I've got a great child. I've got a great family. I'm like, extremely happy. You know, we do like, you know, life is good, mm-hmm. but not a person will know, knows my name. Right. Yep. And, and the, the, you know, what intrigued me was, you know, when we did, went down this path is I've had like, my wife won't call it a career in basketball. I like to say I had a career in basketball. Um, Wait, you play basketball? Yeah, I yeah for, don't lie to me. I played. For, I played from like mini mites back when I was like eight, nine, uh-huh. all the way through senior ball in high school. Okay, okay, okay. And then I had some injuries and whatnot, and I moved, transitioned from playing, and I started refing. Okay, so I refed for a number of years as well. Uh, and now, uh, and now the next, I would love to get either get back into refing if I can have the time, but I'd love to coach too. I think it'd be a lot of fun. 
So, so basketball is one of your first loves. As oh a, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, you've like, been around the game. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So so there was this automatic synergy there right away, right? Um, and then I loved what you guys were doing with you know obviously TBT, uh, but I loved the bigger picture, and yeah. I and and I also selfishly on a strategic standpoint really believe we needed to we needed to diversify further uh with title league title league uh, our network and if uh, you know somebody goes and looks at all our shows we our network is so diverse uh we have very few typical like caucasian male running a show yeah we have african americans we have lots we have so many women-led podcasts but having one, a South Asian led podcast, I, it just opens a whole other door for us from a strategy standpoint. Yeah. Right? So there is a there was a complete selfish standpoint there as well. Uh, but why I'm so but to go back to why I'm so passionate about brown ballers specifically is one I, I love what you and G are doing. I think you two are really great individuals to lead to lead this, and I think you guys have a lot of connects and can actually blow this thing up into something great. I, I, I when I talk about brown ballers to people, I don't talk about this like you know, the charity aspect or, or, you know, what you guys are doing with ESPN, but I talk about the movement you're creating. Right. And that's ultimately what, what you're doing is creating a movement yep. that I think will transcend globally. I love it. And I'm excited to, to see where it goes. Right. I appreciate that, brother. And so to you, I'll ask this question to every guest. What is, you know, what's, what's a brown baller to you? Yeah. Great question. So I kind of touched on, on, on the idea of success, right? Mm -hmm. Um, a brown baller to me, I believe, is somebody who is a master at their craft. Simply put, mm -hmm. whether you are an artist, a wine connoisseur, or whether you are a, you know, a chef, global rapper, key, anything. chef rapper, yep. global keynote speaker, uh, anything you are, if you are a master at your craft, yep. you could be you could be a tradesperson. It doesn't matter, but you are a master at your craft. I believe you deserve You're a title baller. of a brown baller. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're doing something unique in your industry and you're owning it. That's that's, that, that's it. what it's about. Yeah. And, and like you said, I love that you said this is like, it's not about like bringing like Shah Rukh Khan and all these people on the podcast. Like, that's cool. But like, and that's, and that's fine. But like the stories and the people that we want to uncover and share are the individuals like me and you who are like doing things that are impacting just as much, but you know, in a unique way. Navin, uh, for me, it's like, uh, when I look at it, it's two hands, right? You know, Shah Rukh Khan and Meet the Butch and all these people, they're going to drive like so much viewership and yeah. all that stuff. But the, as you've been calling me for the last many days, the average person <laughs> is what I like to believe relatable. Exactly. I, we do everyday things yep. in everyday ways. Yep. I eat like garbage fast food nonstop. Like it, it's like we, this is how, this is what it is. Right. And, yep. and I think because of the relatable standpoint, it allows, somebody to have that like like footpath absolutely so Rohit Bhatia as in your title league role mm -hmm. just just break that down a little bit what are you what are you doing day to day for title yeah uh whew, great question so you know on title uh, I'm uh you know the chief financial officer uh so really what I do is on a strategic standpoint I'm spending my time looking at cash flow right? yeah the, the you know the day-to-day -day bookkeeping that's part of life but maintaining cash flow, looking at our runway, keeping, making sure everybody, you know, we can do the things that we need to do and want to do uh, and finding ways to, in order to do that, right? Right. Uh, I spent mm -hmm. a lot of time on, on, on wearing the, on a strategic side, talking with our, with our founder, Kurt, and, and you know, our um, head of production, Hong, Hong yeah. uh, as we add new shows and, and vetting them out you know, what's the right show for the network, why, what type of, what to, some of our pillars, what does it, what, like, does it attract and, and should it be on, on our network? Uh, and then I work with, uh, with, on a revenue standpoint as well and try to see how can we drive revenue on the shows that we have on our network. And, right. and part of the, the question when we add a show to the network is, is it going to be able to drive revenue for us? Because that's ultimately what I need in order to maintain cash flow. Yeah, and, right? to, keep, and to keep building. So yeah. everything, even though I'm looking on that, those sides of things, I'm doing it on a selfish standpoint and it's to maintain and, and see cash flow. So that that's really where, like, day to day, what what I do. So what is the business side of Title League? What's the, what's the, What are the most important, like, key metrics or things that you guys are looking at to grow as a company? Like, is it, is it just, you know, listens, downloads? What's the bigger picture for you guys to get to your North Star or end goal? 
Well, great question. Um, you know, listens and downloads, of course, they're they're important. Right. Uh, but we're building a, a business on like name, image, and likeness. I think that's going to play a huge role. A lot, all our creators have clout in their own right. Mm-hmm. Uh, all are, 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 you know, are either influencers or on the verge of influence or being influencers have uh, followings have. Got it. And so uh, even, even you, you've got, you've got a huge following, especially yeah. with, with your background with, in the lab as well. Yeah. Right. So, uh, you know, G with his, with his background with, with uh, the NBA. NBA yep. So using and the name, image and likeness in order to help drive viewership is important. Right. Mm-hmm. I like that. What's the what's the end goal? Is there are you allowed to share what the, what that championship is or what something looks like for title? There's there's so many moving parts, right? And so many different paths that you, we can go down. Yeah. And every path has a different north star, but right. every north star is so bright. And I'm gonna well, that's good. It, that's, I'm gonna leave it great. at that, right? So I think it, I think it's good because you guys are are still a young company, we not are. old. Yeah. You guys have some great p- individuals at the helm with Kurt Hong and everyone else. Yeah, the scenes. And I, I think it's exciting. And every time I talk, not every time, but when I'm talking to you, there's always something new coming, which is great. Like whether it's a new show or a new collaboration. Yeah. I think it's that's awesome to know that you guys are just constantly pushing things forward you know we've got some really great creators on our on our network it's yep. it's it's not it's not just you know like some like small time small names right yeah absolutely. we've got active nba players we've got olympic gold and gold medalists on our on our platform yeah you got, a soft, yeah, you got uh, some big got, yeah. some great great names um before i dive into the, ne- into the next question i'm gonna give you yeah. another opportunity to redeem yourself here. Yeah. <laughs> so you know the sandwiches I'll, I'll get i'll present to you here the sandwiches you can you can grab one off let's this, uh, off let's this take this one here this one let's here. see what we've got here i'll just grab this you can take that uh we've, let's see what we've got here all right i don't know if you're gonna guess this um but go ahead you know let me let me just make sure i know what's going on here yep How's how's the McDonald's? Yeah, uh, you knew that one right away. Wow. You know what? This one's kind of like unfair, just because uh, you eat so much McDonald's. <laughs> so this this was the one gimme for you. So that was correct. So you're back on you're back on the table here. Yeah. So you I think this is uh, I think this is the the habanero machine. It is yeah. the habanero yeah. machine. Yeah. Well, let's look at this guy, yeah. man. You know, I'm, I'm proud of you. You know, one for one. Now, as you enjoy yourself, feel free to have all the burgers. They're all for you anyway. Mm-hmm. If there's any left over, you know, we can give it to a we'll, we'll production team. <laughs> you don't want my bite. <laughs> hey, so you just got to cut it in half there. Um, okay, one for one. We got we got three burgers left. That's great. So continuing, continuing on to your, your journey and just who Rowan is, you've had a lot of, you've had a, an interesting journey. I want, I want to kind of touch on it some mm-hmm. more. Kind of sent me that bio yesterday. Got a little chance to check out some of the things you had. Um, first, let's just kick it off with IT. Mm-hmm. First of all, for the average person, not average person, for most people, like, what is IT? And then what was your role in, you know, in the company that you're currently with? Yeah, um, IT is, stands for information technology, uh, and it's really working in the, in the tech sector. And, and what, we do, what we do, I guess, is different than the average organization. Uh, in, in the tech sector. Okay. So I work for an, an IT consulting company. I'm a, I'm a director there, the director of uh, strategic growth and partnerships. Um, and my day-to-day is really to help drive revenue on, on a long-term standpoint. So whether that is from on a client perspective or okay. on developing partnerships with other organizations where we can leverage ve- revenue off of each other on, you know, for, on a long-term basis. And where we, where we differ, I would say, than, than an average company is, so say, you know, um, Brown Ballers, you guys want to build an app, okay? So you would hire, you know, a team of developers or whoever you right, would to hire build to, to build this app, right? Okay. They would live and breathe Brown Ballers because they're either employees or, or contractors mm-hmm. of Brown Ballers and so on and so forth, right? We do very little internal work. So we are a conduit for other organizations. So Brown Ballers would come to us and say, hey, uh, Rohit, uh, we want to build an app. Can you help us? Can you help build, put a team together got it. To, so build, you, to build this app? Yeah, so, got it too. So all of our staff sort of wear two hats. They wear a hat where 
they would got to live and breathe the corporate like lifestyle of the client site that they're on and the clients that they're 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 with. Okay. But then they also got to live and breathe the corporate lifestyle and the corporate mentality of us uh, at Arc, and and that's a, it's such a tricky thing to to balance and manage and to get you know them to believe in because there's only so much in the gas tank at the end of the day, right? Like you like honestly, like you can only rah rah. Yeah, there's so, only so much you can do. Right. Yeah. For sure. And so if you've given it all to your client site, which is uh, which is where we expect you to be, and you're typically there sometimes two, three, four years on a client wow. site. But then we want you to turn around and also still come to our office and still work out of our office once in a while and, and still show up to our, our events and still living and breathe our, our company culture that we've developed over years over the years. It's a tricky thing to do. So uh, we work really hard internally, but uh, on an external basis, yeah, my main job is uh, to drive like long-term revenue. So you're working with the IT, com- IT company full-time. Yeah. You're basically working with Tidal also yeah. full-time, part-time. It's Yeah, totally. It, you know, that's the goal for you is hopefully maybe one day transition into Tidal full-time. Yeah, the goals, yeah. Yeah, be more, be more um, involved there. You also mentioned a little while ago when we met, some other entrepreneurial things that you had, had dabbled in in the past. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've, I've had some fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, 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 let's talk and, about okay, that. Yeah, and like I uh, listen, I, I believe life is meant to be exciting, and and I believe in you you win some and you lose some, right? Of course. Uh, my brother and I we owned restaurants uh, way back when, like uh, we were franchisees uh, of uh, and had of a restaurant called Nando's. Yeah. I, fire spot yeah it's fantastic great, great food chicken, yeah yeah fantastic food uh for till till today till today like fantastic food mm-hmm. uh so we had two restaurants uh you know, on the island in victoria um one of them we had for 10 years and the other one for just short of five okay um and then when i when i moved here to edmonton a couple of years ago i dabbled into a coffee company Oh, uh, it was a mobile coffee company. This is uh, the one I want to talk about. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a mobile coffee company. Uh, really, really great concept. Okay. Um, timing for us was not the greatest. So it was, uh, it's, that one's been a tough one to, to sort of navigate through, or, and we still continue to navigate through it, right? right? But I have, I have no qualms. I would take that shot a thousand times over. Because we had done our research, done our due diligence, done everything. Yeah. And it's just, you know what? Sometimes they don't land. But I would take that that shot a thousand times over because I've got that skin to to be able to... You got thick skin. Yeah. You, and you have to, right? That's part of being an entrepreneur is like being able to take your losses, you know, yeah, with, because di- with dignity. You, you hopefully, the, hopefully the, the balance is, you know, and I, and I try to explain to, to Praveen that like hopefully we lose a couple, but then the ones we win, we win. They're bigger, a hundredfold, right? Yeah. So it's that's that's where the balance comes in, right? So so with the coffee coffee company, let's just touch on it a little bit because I th- actually think this could help a lot of people listening, or maybe maybe it could. Yeah, it's a failed it's a failed business. Yeah, I would say it's, I would say it's nothing failed. wrong with saying that. I've have failed businesses. A lot of people have failed. You yeah. just don't hear us talk about it. What was the learning? Or first of all, I guess like where was the where did the fail come in? I think, uh, to be honest, uh, two two massive failures we I, I had right. Okay. Uh, one was timing, and that was beyond our control. Yeah. Uh, to to give some context, we have this great mobile uh, coffee cart business uh, that was custom built. You know, we were talking LED screens. Uh, you know, ten foot, like huge, like it was a really a you know badass, like it's almost like a dope yeah, food truck, for absolutely, coffee, right? Yeah, and it was meant to slide into trade shows, like right into like events and in, in, in different like uh, yeah, you know, uh, expo centers and things like that. Uh, we had so many shows booked and confirmed. Uh, it was it was actually great. We were in our launch show was in the Calgary Auto Show. That's huge. Yeah. And our first two days were unbelievable. I, I can't even express how how great we did our first two days. But day three, uh, we were halfway through the day. There was an announcement that everything needed to be shut down because of COVID. And because we had to shut things down, we sort of were on a standstill for months and months yeah, and months. it messed so much up. It, it yeah, did. Absolutely. And so I say sort of circumstantial, you know, timing kind of kind of got, bit us in the in the in the behind on that one. Okay. The second thing I've learned is I will never invest in a business that I can't be hands-on in. Okay. So you weren't as hands-on in this one. 
I was I, I wasn't. The idea was we had a we had a gentleman who who we partnered with who was to be the day to day hands on individual. Got it. And we were to sort of back, you know, on a finance Background standpoint. Yeah, yeah, and, and play, okay. yeah, and on an investment standpoint and strategic standpoint, but would not be front facing. And not to get into the, the too many other yeah. particulars, I will never be in a invest in a business where I can't be like I don't want to be front facing, but have more of an impact and and have more of a decision making standpoint, Absolutely. and be be just be more involved and more present with. Yeah, because otherwise you're not actually part of the business. That's if right. If your imprint can't be on yeah, it, yeah. So exactly. So with that company, mm -hmm. if you were to reboot it right now, yeah. What's what's the, what's the major change or how do you make that a success? Timing's now out the way. Let's say that you know yeah. whatever COVID's gone. Yeah, sure. So say COVID's COVID's gone and and I, I don't think we're we're out of that woods yet. But <laughs> yeah, it, not like fully. A, um, <laughs> but if if I was to revive if I was to revive that today, that's interesting. Well, I've thought about this a lot of times. Yeah, well, right? that's good because we have equipment. Where we've got it sitting. Yeah, you must like, have everything. Yeah, still, we right? have it. It's so? all and, and it's all like brand new because yeah. we've used it twice. Um, that we're like, what do we do to if, if we could revive this? One, it would need somebody to like again that you know I want to be involved on. Hey, all right, let's talk direction. Let's talk this. How many shows yeah. should we be on? Mathematically, how like what do we need to be driving profit? Yep, and and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But I I don't want to be the person that is. The daily driver. The daily like, driver that yeah. is loading and unloading the carts and being there the real 10 grinder, hours yeah. a day. Yeah. We need a grinder that's there. Mm -hmm. So hiring the right grinder, um, the having a better profit share system. Uh, I think what we had was was pretty lucrative in, in with with the original with with the partner that we had. But having somebody that that maybe that just believes in it a little bit more right. and believes in the vision a little bit further uh, and being hands-on for a few events to show the fruition that can come from it. Right. Just let me confirm the premise just for, for anyone listening to make sure we have it right. Essentially, it's, it's a really dope... I'm just going to call it a food truck, but it kind of slots in. But when you pull up to it, there's different types of coffee. Yeah. Different so, types of drinks. You're, like, what are you ordering when you, when yeah, you go to so, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a full-blown uh, like uh, coffee uh, coffee shop. So you have all your lattes, Americanos, cool. everything. We also do gelatos, and then then, okay. and then naturally we do affogados uh, as well, right? So you've got – and it's built in. You, we've got like, hand wash stations built in, fridges, uh, uh, for the it's gelato freezer. Like it's premium, premium, yeah, uh, premium Lavazza coffee, yeah. uh, and it's – and the system is like really, really cool. Like it's a, it's the display. It's really cool. And part of where we were forward thinking was we had this LED screen up at the top that showed the menu, but being in trade shows, it was also to double as an advertising space. So to okay, so yep. those, uh, those who were in the trade show could also advertise with on us on like 10, age. 20 second clips so that cool. they would roll throughout the day, you know, find us a booth here Smart, and booth yeah. there. And it was, so it was uh, honest to gosh, it was really brilliant. Just there, there were a couple things I would have shifted and done differently. Will you revive it? Remains to be seen. Uh, you, you know, a lot changes right now. It's just on a time standpoint, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we've got I'm, I'm at at the the consulting company, and that's you know that's demanding. I'm putting in right, 50, yeah. 60 that's hours a week, yeah. and I'm at title league. I'm putting in 40, 50 hours a week. There's not a lot. Of, not a lot of, honest gosh, like once you add my like six hours a night of sleep and having a newborn and child, a baby, yeah. <laughs> And having a wife that that yep. I want to give time for, to, there's there's only so much patience around, right? So, uh, so I don't know right now. I don't know. I don't that's know. A fair, that's a fair answer. How many failed? Do you have other any other failed business? I don't even know them. I just, I'm just curious. Yeah, has one. there been multiple? Yeah, one. one just more. one. One more. One more. Okay, one more. Yeah. Do you want to share? Yeah, sure. Okay. I we uh, and again like. It, it, I had started an app like a an app with uh, three other guys. Okay. Um, I don't want to describe the the particulars of the app because I still think it's a brilliant idea. And if I can revive that one of these days, okay. I totally would. Uh, long story short, we I did it right this time. Um, the we had surrounded ourselves. So the the three partners that we had all were very diverse in their roles, and and when we put the four of us together, we were like a, a super it's a good team. team. Yeah. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, like personal life took on for for a couple of them. Right. So. We just had to, you know, Kevin O'Leary has this saying, like, 
uh, I don't know if you watch Drake's Den or Shark Definitely. Tank. Um, when you watch Shark Tank, if it's a bad idea or if there's something that you can't, he's like, take it behind the barn and yeah, shoot, shoot it. it. Yeah. So we had that conversation, that hard oh, conversation one day, and we said, let's take this behind the barn and shoot it. And we did it. And, and we did, but we acted quickly on that as well. So that's the other thing I would say is if there's something like we weren't too deep into it, uh, we were, we, we had probably been working on like, on developing it for like five six months right like we had invested in some you know blueprints and stuff like that logos that kind of what stuff. type of app is this i know you want that you don't have to share the particular what type of like what type of app um, am i using this app you would use this app what type of app like what's the category this is on is this like a video game is this a, a networking a networking app okay and it's never been done before it's been done in different merits but the way we but were you trying felt really to, good yeah about we, this. we felt really good and we found we took a we took a wheel that was already working and but not very common okay and tried to make the wheel better and we were going to do it and i think one day you know if we can put the right team together and and with the right dedication and focus we can do that so i wouldn't actually call that a failed app or a failed uh, you know opportunity but we did take it behind it was a wicked name too man it was like um but we take it behind the barn and shoot yeah. it for now if, like if it's not dead and we get to pull a bullet yeah, out then we do come, right? maybe a zombie might well, come back well, to one, life. one day you never know <laughs> okay, it's so it. it's, um, it's cool as we keep transitioning here you have three more burgers so uh, I, uh, let's do this one. what do you, what do you want to take next one. uh actually no let's not do this one um you got, you got this one. This one's hard because I've never eaten a burger with cheese in it. So, and more pickles. Like, what the hell is you and pickles? So, so I honestly have no. Yeah, clue I don't think you're. Going. I honestly don't think you're gonna. You're gonna guess this one. But is know. it from what? Is it? Are these from like all like big popular? These 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 are all well known fast food chains that you should know, and you have probably ninety percent of your body is made up of four <laughs> four out of five of these. So if you don't guess them. Again, man, like I'm just gonna be disappointed. This whole episode might have to be canceled, or the whole beginning will have to be cut out. So as, as you're doing this, the reason I like talking about failures and I don't get to do it with too many people because a lot of people don't want to actually talk about the failures in business is even where I'm at right now. You know, this has probably been five or six different businesses that have failed. So at, as with you as an entrepreneur, even with Title League, because you know you have a good role there. I see. I see you're really trying to. You're really trying to figure out what this burger is. You have no idea, do you? Wild, wild guess on this one, but I have no clue. What is it? Burger King. No, you're wrong. I'm wrong, right? Yeah. No. Oh, for two. You want to know what that is? Not oh for two. One oh, sorry, you're one, one for two. two. You want to know what that one is? What is That's a Wendy's new f spicy fire chicken or something like that. I'm gonna be honest with you. I pulled up to the Wendy's drive-through, and it was the first time I'd ever seen this burger. I think it just came out. I almost ordered one for myself. I was like, this is this is all for you. That's that's a Wendy's new uh, chicken burger. Interesting. Is it good? It's spicy. It's good. It's good. It's not bad. I never ordered it again, but it's good. <laughs> that's because you didn't guess it properly. <laughs> it's off now. Because <laughs> like now, so are they all from different places? I mean, I don't know. You know, you can uncover them. You can answer that question yourself if you if you uh, knew them. <laughs> uh, this is gonna be a problem. Because <laughs> oh, wow. You you only have two left. Yeah, you know, know it's all good. And one of them um, I thought I knew, but I don't think I know anymore. Let, let's rewind a little bit and go mm -hmm. back to Sorry. young young Rohit. Because <laughs> I'm again, I'm always curious about this. And I told you the other day, I've been trying to not self discover, but just going through as having brown balls has been great, mm -hmm. right? Because I get to not only show people like the culture we have, the amazing things that all the all the brown people that we have like celebrated uh -huh. know there's just so much that goes into being indian and being brown skin but i grew up very differently so i'm always curious how other people have grown up so when you grew up were you guys allowed to eat beef were you religious did you ever go to temple did you pray did you celebrate the holidays like give me the the breakdown we were cultured not religious let's okay. put it that way okay so um we grew up eating beef okay every week Again, I'm jealous of you. Well, Continue. <laughs> my uh, my mom makes these kima kebabs that are like oh kima <laughs> to die for. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah. So we grew up eating beef. We didn't go to the temple very much. Um, Diwali, celebrated weddings, funerals. That's it. Three main holidays. Sorry, two main holidays. Two main holidays. <laughs> yeah. and something else. Right. Okay. Really, that was the only time we went. Um, and then my mom would go for another holiday, like you, um, you're fully aware, uh, cover shots. Oh, cover shots. Yeah. yeah, of course. But that's about it. Uh, 
Diwali, we would do prayers at home. Okay. Um, and that's, yeah, that's, that's. Was, so, it. so nothing was ever forced. Nothing was ever forced. Your I, parents I took were chill. On, yeah. I took it on myself one year to learn the guy three mantra. So I know the guy three mantra and then, uh, recite and then, it. Oh, oh my God. Can you do one line right now? Respect, respect. I I don't know. Was that from the Gayatri Mantra? Yeah. Okay, respect. It's not? I don't actually know. I'm going to have to fact check that because okay. in my mind, that's something else. But I'm still very impressed that okay. you did that. I don't so care maybe it's if that was right or wrong. Well, I'm impressed you did Jesus, that. Uh, you can correct me. And <laughs> no, I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't know, know much more than you. I'm just, you know, we're just here. Um, uh, no, but. So, so your and parents. And then uh, Om Jai Jagdish, I, had to, I learned one yeah, year. Yeah, uh, that, That's like, right, I know. Yeah, I used to know all the verses. Now I know most of the verses. And there you go. Now my mom does puja at home and, you can, you and she along. can't remember the word. Like I can <laughs> fill in the blank, right? <laughs> So, I honestly love that you're just saying that, by the way. I appreciate that. Um, but my accents are terrible. Like That's, I mean, that's the first thing that... Likewise, uh, it's fine. Uh, my, Praveen makes fun of me all the time because Praveen grew up in a house where like she spoke Punjabi nonstop yeah. and all that. And, so, and she's and she's fully fluent, and right? same with Yeah, absolutely. And same with my brother's wife, Indu. Uh, both of them just make fun of my brother and I all the time. And, uh, do you guys speak any? Broken. Well, that's good. You I, understand? I understand. Hindi or, Hindi or Punjabi? Hindi. Okay. I understand Hindi... Uh, a lot. Uh, I can speak Hindi broken. I understand most of it. Yeah. Uh, and I can understand majority of Punjabi because, of, uh, you know, if it's spoken slow enough. Yeah. But I've created my own like mix between Punjabi and Hindi when I talk to yeah. Praveen's parents uh, and it they figure it out. So it's okay. Aap kya Hindi bolte hai? Yeah. Hanji. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking I love that, bro. I love it. Um, you're, <laughs> that's that. That was a podcast right there, and it should end after that. I love it. Your your parents originally from India. Like, yeah, where, where so dad India? dad's from New Delhi. My mom's okay. from Bombay. Okay, Mumbai, Bombay. Yeah, I would assume they're fluent. Oh gosh, yeah, 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 because yeah. that's where they grow. Yeah, I, I'm just curious. Like, are they just chill, or like, why was it for them? Like. They didn't feel the need to push anything on you guys. They, they didn't just... push it. We, they spoke English at home. Yeah. And the only Hindi we ever learned was when we would watch Hindi movies. Sure. And then the subtitles, the subtitles would be on. Yeah. And we'd watch, and that's how, we, that's how I or my, my brother or I learned any Hindi. And I picked up a lot more. Yeah. Now, that being said, one thing that was static pretty much every Sunday morning is on TV. Uh, I can't remember what channel, but every Sunday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., First, the Ramayan came, uh, the Mahabharata would come. Yes, yes. But before yes. the Mahabharata, you know, we used to rent the 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 cassette, like the video tapes yeah. oh, wow. for the Ramayan. VHS. Yeah, yeah, and watch the VHS it. we would watch. So, and the VHS tapes, like I'm telling you, we're talking three hours on on, on the tape, right? And like 36 tapes of for of the Ramayan. So we watched, like we, I know the Ramayan story and the Mahabharata story pretty pretty well. Yeah, and I I've told Praveen that like you know. Our child, Athira, can grow up how she wants to grow up, but she will know these two stories and she will, like she will watch these two Cause, stories. Because you, you can relate to that. You, you uh, absolutely. watched it, yeah. And Praveen hasn't watched, uh, because Praveen grew up Sikh and different. Punjab, right? It's just very different. Yep. So, mm -hmm. and, and that's one thing to note, like when we talk brown ballers, it's not like brown can be so many different there's colors so many. of brown and exactly. shades of brown and and languages. Like, there's like, I think there's what, 108 dialects so uh, much. or 108 different languages yep. spoken in India. I think it's even more than that. So, Hey, like it, and all the cultures as you go north to south and east to west, it's east west. Uh, it's it's, it's, it's close enough. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's so many different. Like so much culture is completely different. Religion is completely it different. It changes all over. Which and is, then if you yeah. bounce from there to Sri Lanka or there to Pakistan or there in Maldives continues or wherever, change, it just yeah. continues to change and evolve. And so it, it's different, right? So as maybe you guys don't know this yet, or maybe this is a conversation to have with Parveen, but. With Athira growing up, are like, are you guys teaching her Punjabi Hindi? Is is has that been talked about? Does it matter to you guys? Yeah, it, it, of course it matters to us. It, it, it's been talked about. Um, I don't know where we've we've landed. I think we definitely want her to learn like Punjabi or Hindi. Yeah, I think the realisticness of her learning Punjabi is a lot more. To be honest, because she'll spend time with her grandparents and, and her parents are here, that mine are not. That makes right? a big That's thing. reality. Big difference, yeah. And so 
even like from three, four, five months when they're starting to like pick up words and sounds and things like that, they're going to hear her parents speaking Punjabi. Right. So it's natural. natural. It's just going to happen. Right. Yep. Um, I don't want them going to like, I don't want our, our kid going to like Punjabi school or Hindi school. It's just not, doesn't like, but we'll, we'll remain to see if that happens. My yeah. mind may over change time, over time. You'll, you'll, you'll right? change, it, yeah. it depends. Or but see. I do want them to grow up with the right morals and values. And I want them to grow up understanding our culture. Yeah, that's huge. That is something that, that I think as generations are continuing on, it's being lost more and more. There's not, there's not many people around you that in your, uh, in this age category that could recite the guy three mantra. And no, like I said, no I don't way. know if I did or not, or we, but, just still, like, yeah. but or, or even understand what it is. Right. Yeah. So and that's only going to get lost in translation more and more as we go, you know, more degrees of separation and, and, and you're, you're, you know, more degrees here, like born and raised. Right. So I, it's really important to me that she doesn't lose that. No, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Something that Ambika's parents would tell us is and exactly to what you just said, how like we're, it almost seems like our generation and the next generation is losing the, the traditions or like what our culture has. Cause there's a yeah. lot of beautiful things to it. And, you know, like me and Ambika will celebrate Holi or we'll celebrate Carver Chod, but yeah. like, I don't know anyone else, like, not even within the friend group, just like in our age that like, we'll do that or we'll have people over and host it to where like, yo, let's celebrate this together because it's, it's meaningful and there's something bigger than, it's just some, it's something so much bigger, right? Yeah. And, well, I'll be straight with you. When it comes to, to Carver Chod, um, it, Parveen, uh, like Parveen's here, obviously, and my mom and and Indu are in Victoria. Right. So it's not like she can be, it's not like always feasible for her to be there. Right. Yeah. And so when it was her first time doing it here. Yes. If, Th yeah. This was her first time, right? Yeah. The first time doing it here. She did it her first time last year in, in Victoria with my mom. Okay. But yeah. it's not feasible for us to go back every year. Right. Yeah. So the question was like, how do I do this by myself? It's more comfortable doing it with somebody. Yeah. And so when Ambika made that suggestion or, or that gracious offer to include yeah. Parveen in, in that experience, Parveen was over the moon. Otherwise, my mom was trying to set up with her friends that are here in Edmonton oh, to go. for Parveen to go there yeah. to like her, the aunt, with all these aunties. That's because the average person this generation isn't doing They're not doing it. No. Yeah. And it's, and, it's yeah. It's it's really interesting actually, and for those who don't know Carver Chodhan, hopefully I don't butcher this, but it's you know, it's so essentially I've been avoiding saying. Yeah, no, it's just it's, it's just essentially like it's it's not even hard to explain. It's like our wives will fast all, day, and you know some of the husbands will do it too. Will fast all day, and then we go to break that fast night with a prayer. We have to wait until the moon comes out at nighttime, and it's essentially wishing good health and fortune and all these things towards the husband. It's basically all done for us. Yeah, well, straight up. The, the wife will not drink water, nothing throughout the whole day, just for our health. And it, it's amazing to... And I don't <laughs> understand the compute of like, how do you starve yourself for my health? I don't, I don't get that math. But, but this, is, this is also the, the, the crazy thing about things that have been passed down for generations that yeah. sometimes you sit back at and you go, does that actually make any sense? And it may not, but you don't change it because that's just the way it is. That's just how it is. And that's just, and that's, that's, yeah. but, and that's for, it's like the double edged sword of, it's kind of messed up, but on the flip side, it's kind of special because you know that this has happened for a lineage, right? Yes. Growing, growing up, did you guys have an altar, a prayer room, anything within your house? Yeah, we have a small mandir in our closet, in the closet upstairs. Okay. Like a small. Were you altar. a popular kid growing up? I have a second question to follow this up. Uh, and I won't uh, judge you based on the answer being no. <laughs> depends on what, what, why don't you ask the follow up Did question? you have a lot of friends come over? Would you no. have like birthday parties at the no, house? No, no, not a lot of friends coming over and, and, and no. Okay, so the, the reason I was asking is I was going to ask you if when people came over, like did friends or anyone in your circle ever say anything about the altar or see it and be like, what is this or what's that? or No, so the closet was like, typically closed okay not because of just me but that the closet was just typically closed yeah uh in general um my dad but we had so many we have so many statues like throughout house, the house right throughout the house yeah, like we awesome. have like an area where all the Argonesh statues are right mm -hmm. and we have uh 
an area like my dad till today there's a little like little like murti that sits at b- before he leaves the house at the, in the kitchen on the kitchen counter a uh, little like statue of uh, of uh, you know the om symbol yeah, yeah, one of the of gods course. and and he always like prays to it before he leaves before the he house leaves. so he has his like little tradition yeah, there yeah absolutely yep. and and that till today right and so but no i have, i can't say like anybody's really said or asked like i even have like in in my condo Just gonna ask you. and then in my house like yeah. we have a like i had a little like like Munder, a little altar. Yeah, you have like a little, a little yeah, small and little now setup. In, yeah. in our house here, we have one. Absolutely. Yeah, so you're carrying you're carrying that over. Uh, absolutely. Are you religious? I'm cultured. You're cultured. Do you have a, tra- a tradition or a, something you do every day similar to your father? And maybe you you say a little prayer, or you do something, or you you know even my sometimes my brother used to tell me like he may not pray, but he he would just kind of you know look at the altar and just like and then walk past. Like, do you have something like that? Or is it to you just like, no, like, you know, I'm, I'm good. No, I don't. Uh, no. There's nothing wrong. I'm just, yeah, I'm, no. you know, I'm just, I'm just curious. No, I don't. But we have a, um, like the, we have, uh, you know, the, the Munder in, in, in our, like upstairs in and yeah. in the closet. And it's got both Hindu gods and then it has like some Sikh gods in okay, there as yeah. well. Right. It, uh, it's, and then we actually have, uh, like a Babaji's photo, like a, like Kanda in our main, like yes. in our living room. Yeah. And that was given to be uh, by somebody very special. And, um, and so it sits, uh, it sits, it sits there for in, you. In, yeah, forever. And, it, and he, when he gave it to us, he had told us that, uh, that it needs to sit somewhere in like open public to ensure it gives prayers to the room. And we respected that and put it somewhere in wide open view yes. where, where, where it, we hopefully, brings us fortune and luck for for all of life so i can't say i have a a thing that i do um but you, you believe i believe oh i <laughs> i definitely be- believe yeah yeah, you yeah, believe. yeah yeah i definitely believe it's hard to say i'm religious because i like, like praveen when when we got married she would go to the the mandar like every full or the gurdwara every full, full moon, moon right yeah and I, I never quite understood or like, I, and I still don't quite understand. I respect it. And when it, now when she wants me to go, I go with her. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I don't feel like I have to go there in order to say something to the man upstairs. Right. This or is, any of the 180 of the men. Some, some would say this is, <laughs> some would say this is one of those older traditions where it's, yeah. it's, it's come through and it's not going to change. So either you do it or like I said, you may have an alternate version like right. you, but but I definitely believe that there is yeah. a higher power uh, that is guiding us. And I, I believe we have an impact on two things in our life. Or we have no control on two things in our life. Okay? Okay. We have no control on the day we're born and the day we die. And in Amen. between yeah, that, facts. we have all this control and, and we have somebody making this guiding light. Even the mistakes, mm-hmm. right? There's reasons everything happens. And some are to teach us a lesson. Some, I believe, is because, you know, something wasn't going to write about to happen. So they, you know, they pulled shoot on it when, when they could or whatever. And some things happened. Like, I can give you a really great example of this. So Parveen and my story is, 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 cool. is different in, in essence, okay? So, well, not different, but we met on Tinder. Uh, December, mid Shout out to Tinder and Bumble because yeah. they made a lot of relationships. Yes, they did. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Praveen, if you're watching, I never used any other dating apps ever. <laughs> you were my first date. Make sure we zoom in on and his last. face. <laughs> um, but no, uh, all jokes aside, we met December, mid December 2019. Yeah. Okay. And now I want to put a picture here that third week of March or second week of March, third week of March uh, 2020 is when the world shut down, right? Okay. So in between then, COVID was never a thing, right? So you live life as normal, okay? And we got to a point where I met her parents. And you know, if you're meeting some a parent who's a little bit more religious and, and cultured yep. and old school, if you're meeting them, you're meeting them with the intention that you're going to marry their daughter. Otherwise, you're not just bringing a boyfriend around. So when I met them, I met her family. And I knew right away, uh, I, like... Sorry, were you the first boy she had brought home? I think there was a boy that like, like dropped her off at uh, on the okay, but not, job, no, but not like coming in and coming uh, in I don't think yeah. so. Um, yeah, I don't think so. But 
she'll correct me if I'm wrong later on. So <laughs> when we'll, she watches then this we'll, back, then we'll she'll discuss, slap you. Then we'll just discuss this, right? <laughs> um, so thanks for that. Um, <laughs> But to tell you, the, the, like to go back to, to stay on track for a minute here is, you know, so think COVID doesn't exist, right? So we're just living life. Uh, we, I meet her parents. I've told my parents that like, I met this girl, like she's amazing. I want to marry her. I think it's, I think it's great. And then I said to my dad, I said, her family, this is like early February, mid February, just after I met her parents. Right. I said, her family's coming out to a wedding in May, which is a perfectly normal thing at this point, right? If COVID wasn't a thing. So why don't, they're coming out to a wedding in Vancouver uh, in May. Why don't you guys hop the ferry, meet them in Vancouver. Smart. Okay. And then the families can get together in May. We can, we can meet and all that. And then at least the meet and greet is done. And then we can continue to figure out things as life goes on. Yeah. And for some reason, my dad said, ah, no, if you want, like, if you know she's the one, then why are we waiting? Give us their phone number or tell them to call us and tell them to come to Victoria. Otherwise, we'll come to Edmonton. And I was like, and I was like, what's the pressure? What's the rush? Like, I've been meeting this girl two and a half, dating her two and a half months. Like, what are we, what are we doing here? Like, this is like, this is crazy. But okay, you know what? Sure. So they arranged whatever, and they showed up in Victoria two, the second week of March. Yeah. Okay. Met my parents. We all got along really well. Everything happened, and the they left on that Sunday. I tried to leave on the Monday. My flight got canceled. I got back on Tuesday. Wednesday happened and Thursday the world shut down. So if the higher power did not say like, hey, to do this. Let's, yeah. we got to meet now or whatever went through my dad's body that said we have to meet this month or next yeah. month and why wait till May, we probably wouldn't have, my parents, or the parents probably wouldn't have, wouldn't met have met by now. Because yeah. my dad's not well, he's traveling, we're, we're, he doesn't travel really. And, and, you know, having at that time would have been strangers, like coming right off a plane, we're yeah, less comfortable absolutely. on an immune system standpoint, all the rest of it. So, so many factors in place, we probably wouldn't be married right now. And we probably wouldn't have a Thera in this moment in time, maybe down the line, but not in this It would have changed your whole trajectory. The absolutely. whole trajectory and yeah. life would be a very different path than it is currently. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have it for the wouldn't change it for the world. So I believe that there's a higher power guiding at all times, and and that's a perfect example of, of what I'm talking about. I love it. Let's let's dive into here as, as we get close to wrapping up. You got right. two more sandwiches all here. Right. All right, all right, all right. There's honestly only two things, so you you know you can just grab one here. Oh yeah. Um, so let's you're, try. You're this one, one for two. Let's try this one. I already know what this is. Coming in here on the last ones. I already uh, know what this is. This is why I was trying to trying to figure. If you know what it is, don't even take a bite of it. Let's see. <laughs> Okay, can if I get it wrong, can I take a bite of it and then try? If you no, know, what do you think it is? Wendy's. Yeah, that's the Wendy's spicy yeah. chicken. <laughs> yeah, and I'll tell you. Uh, you can tell by looking at yeah. certain no, burgers. I'll tell you a backstory. So you know how I ate. Um, <laughs> you know how I ate fast food growing up, right? Uh, we all know McDonald's, yeah. <laughs> KFC. Uh, McDonald's, KFC were the staples. Okay. Wendy's was. We would never get coupons when we were younger, so we would never really go. And it was like there was only one in Victoria. So we never really ventured out there. The only time I would go was with my mom. And we would go on lunch dates to Wendy's every once in like months. Yeah. Right. And that's how like you this is this. ingrained. Yeah. We would get this together with go. no tomatoes. We would have the fries and, and the Coke. We would talk about life. We would talk about it was the only real time where my mom and I would bond with like no interruption, no nothing. So some good old and fast food the conversation we have would like stay between us and like help guide a lot of life that, that I live. That was like I your safe today. place almost just with your mom. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was an interesting time. And, and so Wendy's is always special to me, but uh, we don't eat it very often, but yeah, I'm going to take a bite of this one because take a bite and savor that memory. Cause that's actually a great memory. Um, so in classic fashion, you know, you're, you're two for two. Mm -hmm. So we head into overtime <laughs> and you, and you have one remaining burger. So it's, this is great. This is great for TV. You know, your whole life will hang in the balance based on the decision you make on that burger. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll let you, you know, digest that. And I, I want to ask you another qu simple question here. Every time I see you, something that always, you know what always stands out to me about you? What? That, that, that thing on your finger, man. That what? rock. Oh, thank you. For, first question is, is that the wedding band? It is my wedding band, yes. Did you I pick, have two wedding bands, but yes. Did you pick it out? Band. Um. Yes. Okay. Just... Walk me through this this style or like why that that one in particular. I spent I spent years in jewelry, years right okay. working in jewelry, uh, and 
so I've always had like this is like not my first diamond ring. I have like six, seven diamond rings. Wow. Okay. Um, this is this one's by far like this, this one's, one's the dope. biggest. Yeah. This, yeah, this it's, is it's huge. Yeah. And it's flashy. And to be honest, the way like when we tried on a bunch of rings, and she wasn't hesitant. She was a little hesitant in the beginning when I, when when I put this like this much bling on my finger. Yeah. She's like, do you need now? Uh, you should just have a simple band, like this and that. But then we tried on simple bands and we tried on with, with like just a little bit of diamonds. It just didn't have the girth, it didn't look the same. Didn't, yeah. I can and imagine. We even tried the that. small, there's a smaller version of this, like a, like a half the carat weight like okay. it, 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 of this one. And we tried it on. It just, this one, I put it on, it just suits my finger. It's fire. I, so, you don't see many like guys wearing that type of ring. Also, but it suits you. It suits your personality and Appreciate who you are it. and your style. So it's dope. And I have another one. I have a like a tungsten that has a black diamond in it that I wear okay, that good. I wear when I travel. So I don't take this one when I travel. You uh, switch it to that. Yeah, one. both Parveen and I both are we we leave our rings here and then we travel okay. with separate rings. Yeah. Um typically. You got you got this last sandwich here. Mm. Go ahead. All right. Let me, let me I pass you all the other ones. Let me be a good host and pass yeah, you this yeah, last yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I actually don't even remember what this one is, but uh, this is weird. This is your last. Oh yeah, this is. Oh yeah, okay. I am not gonna guess this, this one. This is a good one here to to test out. You know where your knowledge really is in the fast food world. Um, I've I've learned from this podcast. You don't like pickles. You don't like tomatoes. Um, you just want what's fried and the sauce essentially. Yeah, and lettuce. I love you have a lettuce. first guess, just without even without even. So I'm trying to think. Break down the burger, man. So there's barbecue sauce in here. Okay. There's pickles, tomatoes, lettuce, uh-huh. and some sort of <laughs> spicy mayo of kind. The issue is I won't be able to taste the mayo or whatever this is. So there's onions in here too. The, you want to take those off too? No, that's fine. The heck is this? Where is this from? This, this, this one's out from left field. So if you, if you guess this one, you know, it, it says a lot about you. But don't don't forget you're two for two. So this, this is your yeah, last this is opportunity. Problem, here. Like... So as as he's as he's going through this, you know, we, we've we've talked about a, a bunch of different things here. And this is something I told you I was gonna ask you. We'll see if you have it prepared now as you're enjoying this last sandwich here. Just to kind of go completely off topic from everything else we've talked about is what's your NBA starting five? You, you say you love basketball. I know you've prepared this. You, no, you've been, you researched all last night. I didn't research at all <laughs> last night. Uh, who so, is it? Who is who is the starting five? Break it break it down. All right. So I don't know. I can't tell you in what like what position or whatever. I'm just gonna That's tell fine. you in yeah, the five. Just, just list it. So you've got Michael Jordan. Okay. Without question. That's all I got for you. Um <laughs> That's one guy. No, Michael Jordan <laughs> with a, uh, I have Dennis Rodman on there. Okay. Right? Okay. Dennis Rodman. Okay. Dennis so grab Rodman your boards. Was, Dennis Rodman yeah. is the scrappiest player to ever exist in the is the scrappiest player to yeah. ever exist in the NBA. Yeah. So, sorry, Michael Jordan, Dennis Rodman. Um, I've got Shaq. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, I've got Kevin Garnett. You're going just all bigs. And then the wild card for me was that like that that other like backdoor guard, right? And I do, do, I do like small like like a small like a shooting guard or, okay. or or point guard. Um, and I really tossed and turned as to who this should be. And I ended up, um, I ended up with like, just like something a little, somebody like a you little lackluster. Like Steve, who did you pick? No, I just picked Steph Curry. And okay, so, like so you, got, you got Steph, Michael, Mike in the backcourt. Prime Shaq, Prime Dennis Rodman. And KG. And Kevin, Kevin Car- Garnett. Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett is one of the most epic basketball players I've ever well, seen. He, play his intensity. Yeah. He's, a, he's, a, he's a legend. He's a, he's a Hall of Fame player. Um, I know you have no idea what that is, so it's fine. You can you can take the, you can take the L on it. It's disgusting. It's so bad. I would say the same thing if I was going to lose a challenge that I basically teed up for you to win. So teed this up for me to win. <laughs> you give me a burger that nobody's ever seen before. That one I should have gotten. My favorite thing is seeing competitive people get angry when they lose something. Because they know they should have won. They they he saw this platter and said, "I'm going to destroy this." Ended up losing because he doesn't know this. Now he's buying time. No, I, give me one sec here. I'm gonna tell <laughs> you. You finish the burger if you want. It's why. I don't want this. It's gross. <laughs> so for you growing growing up, like in the household, were you, did you watch sports? Watch basketball. Um, that's the thing was we watched basketball. 
but it wasn't like we watched NBA all the time. We yeah. watched primetime Jordan. Like I remember like we would get to stay up late for, you know, his games. yeah, okay. for his That's games. Cool. Uh, we we watched all his all his games. We were huge Jordan fans. We had like a shrine to him in our basement. So you know, okay. posters everywhere. We had. So he's your goat. He, he's, you know, he's, he's your he's family's the, goat. Without question, he's the goat. And 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 you grew up watching. Yeah. Him, so there's a difference there. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't don't understand that. Yeah. We we grew up watching him play this like this art, and and yeah. and when he played, it was not basketball. It was like an it was an art. He, what he did was magic. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We grew up watching cricket because my dad watched cricket a lot and, and tennis and because my dad Same. watched tennis a lot. We but, watched a lot, a lot of late nights, early mornings watching cricket. And then with, we transitioned with, with into NCAA and we watched, we, we okay. watched a lot of March Madness. Yeah. Um, like I'll do my bracket every year. And, but yeah, that's really all. Like I don't, unfortunately I don't watch a lot of sports. I just like, I watch a lot of trashy reality TV. You know, that's my like. I'm so happy you said it because my last question for you was for us to simply discuss reality TV. Yeah, because sure, you and Parveen are on a different level. Yeah, we we <laughs> like we watch a lot of like, yeah. Like I watch some other like like shows like real shows like at least I believe they're real shows. Like I watch like The Rookie, um, Is Big that the Sky. Cop show? Yeah, I watch <laughs> a lot of every Doctor show like. <laughs> Like house and stuff. Yeah, I'll watch it. Grey's like, Anatomy. I, I haven't. I, they're they're on my list to watch, but all the current ones like New Amsterdam, The Good Doctor, The Resident. Um, I'm trying to start the transplant. So I watch all these doctor shows. I like. I actually think I'm like a legit certified doctor. When when, when <laughs> you're one was, of those guys. When Pervino was giving birth, I was like, "You're doing this wrong." Like, let me let me count. Let me like, assist you. Yeah, here. call me in, coach. And that's, that's a- <laughs> what's what's the. Right now, what are you guys what what are you guys watching? What is like the favorite show right now? Oh, our favorite show forever and always will be Ninety Day Fiance. Classic, a lot, uh, of, uh, lot of hilarious clips. That of- is our like right now. There's two simultaneous going like Ninety Day Happily Ever Happily Ever After and Ninety Day like The Single Life, and they're so great. Like they're such great shows. Uh, the, the, the the you get so much joy out of seeing this because we joke like because most people don't know when we went to Victoria that in March. We had this like Indian little ceremony called uh, like the Taka or the Roka, uh, Roka which yeah. is like yeah. almost like an Indian engagement in a way. Uh, and so we kind of joked that we were like a 90 day fiance because that's the, yeah, it was like, just it together, it was yeah. like 87 days from when, that's we, crazy. when we met. So, okay. But no, 90 day fiance forever. Uh, we just finished uh, Dubai Bling. Seen that on Netflix. It's wicked. Um, it's a different type of money and a different type of lifestyle yep. that, that is being lived in Dubai. And then we watch all those like uh, realtor uh, reality shows, like, yeah, like you know, sell, selling, selling sunset. sunset. Uh, the so new some classic one, shows. Buying there. Beverly Hills is a new one now. Yeah, uh, I used to watch like Million Dollar Listing LA in New York. I've seen pretty much every season. So, ah, uh, I don't. I I know you're trying to avoid it. And no, I I am because I. What's, I, what's the final guess? You're two for two. Give me give me that. Give me the guess here. Where is this burger from? Burger number five. Okay. Give me one. Mary Brown's. No, you feel lost. Yeah, I thought you so. Lost, yeah. yeah it's, no. Har- it's Harvey's. I would have never guessed that. <laughs> yeah, so I'm happy. I'm happy the curveball worked. I would have never guessed Harvey's there. You're you're close though. Like I said, two I should have because there's only one place you can go to get all those and, whacked and toppings. Barbecue sauce and stuff. Yeah. It's, I don't think you can get that at any other place. But and what was was the first one Popeyes? First one was Popeye. Yeah, I really I, thought you would have had that. No, one. I thought I like it, uh, I had it, and then I second guessed, and then I went to KFC. But I know because I thought you were trying to pull one over on me and <laughs> and get me this one with the, with the pickles, and I was like, yeah, that's what I was trying to taste the chicken. Like, uh, yeah, no, I lost. So, I'll take. I, I, I will. So t- I'm, it's, not it's gra- I'm not even graciously. Just you know, it's the first time I've ever done a mug bang, whatever we want to call it. Um. Wow, you this know, was for, fun. First time ever. Yeah, this is wicked. Ever. It was it was cool, something interesting to try. I'm gonna throw it back to you here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Athira may wa- may watch this podcast, you know, ten years from now, fifteen <laughs> years. Who knows? This content will be surfaced on the World Wide Web and somewhere. Yeah, totally. What what do you want to tell her, or what what is what is your message to her, or honestly, and, it, and this could be also be to any like, you know, young brown brown boy or girl growing up. Like, what's what's your message for them? So I know the struggles I faced growing up, right? And I want to, I think the most important thing for me to say to, to Athira and then I guess to, to every other young kid coming up uh, in, in today's world is the world's a challenging place. Uh, we thought 
you know, when I was growing up, I thought the world was going to get easier. And I thought, you know, it was going to get easier for us in, in this society. Yep. I don't think that's actually true. I think it's actually getting a little bit harder. I think uh, the name calling, the racism, all that stuff is more prevalent and easier to do. Uh, and I think it's partially because of all the cyberbullying and all that social stuff, media. The social media, and it yep. makes it so easy now to judge somebody. Whereas before, you just had to do it in person. So it is a different it's actually harder to do. Yeah, it's a different type of, you know, they, they what is that term they call keyboard warriors, right? Yep, keyboard warriors. So, yeah. like, so my message to, to you know, Athera is like stay grounded, stay humble, and stay focused, right? If you stay focused and you stay grounded and you remember what your guiding light is, whatever your guiding light may be, nobody will steer you away from that. And, and there's always, always going to be somebody to support you on the backside, right? And that was one thing my father always reminded me of is if something goes sideways, remember, we're always here. So I want to tell Athera that, remember, we're always here. But for every other kid that is out there, your parents, your, uh, you know, your siblings, uh, your aunts, uncles, us, like we like reach out. If you ever need support or help or want to talk or anything, there's so many outlets that you just have to take advantage of, um, but stay focused, stay humble, and and you'll capture the world by storm if you do so. Beautiful piece of advice and spoken spoken very well. Um, this has been another episode of the Brown Ballers podcast. I'm sitting here with Rohit Bhatia, entrepreneur, husband, father, singer, songwriter, TikTok <laughs> dancer, so many things, but also the CFO of Title League, which this podcast is brought to you by, sponsored, hosted. This is their platform. We want to thank you guys again for like allowing us this. I know Kern Hong aren't here. One day we'll get the whole gang and yeah, we'll do something cool. But we're excited to be a part of this and we're excited to do more and more content. Like you said, just break stereotypes, break the mold, and really redefine what it means to be brown in this day and age. It's been fantastic. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's been amazing.